Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Only Choose One Work, or If I Could Choose Only One Work by Composer X, it would have to be Work Z. Well, it's Work Z because Composer X is Zelenka, who we've been talking about a lot lately because I've been trying to catch up. There are some composers who I think need to be promoted a little bit more firmly, especially now that the recordings are available and we can talk about those and you can actually hear the music. I mean, you know, some people only live by reputation and we can't actually hear the music. And if you can't hear it, it doesn't exist as far as I'm concerned. I mean, in a meaningful way. Well, Zelenka for many, many years barely existed. There were only a few recordings of his orchestral works and very few of his sacred music, but that's what he wrote. He wrote like a couple of dozen mass settings and lots and lots of shorter liturgical works. And that's what he did. He was a church music composer. Um, and what has survived is a fairly small, but quite representative, happily for us, sample of his incredibly quirky, imaginative, original, and sounds like no other person in the universe um, Baroque style. Selenka was a character, I, I mean, musically speaking. I mean, personally, he may have been. We don't know much about him. His dates were, well, let's see. What were his dates? 1679 to 1745. And the work in question is his Missa Dei Filii. This is work Z. The Missa Dei Filii. Now, this is one of his Missae Ultimae, or whatever they were called. He wanted to write six big mass settings as his final project at the end of his life. He only completed three of them. And this one consists only of a Kyrie and a Gloria, um, which means that it's a Lutheran mass. And he was Catholic, and he was working in Dresden, which was Catholic. So uh, people believe that the thing is incomplete, and there isn't any reason to dispute the fact that it's incomplete, except that it works perfectly well the way it is with the Kyrie and the Gloria, because the Kyrie is quite brief. Let's see, it's one, two, plus six, seven, seven, eight minutes-ish long, but the Gloria is huge. It's his biggest Gloria setting. It really seems like it could be an independent piece. In fact, this should be as popular as any sacred piece that we hear it regularly, like the Bach Magnificat or the Vivaldi Gloria or the Poulenc Gloria or any of those Gloria settings. I mean, it should be played like that. It's so much fun. It's harder than most of those, I think, technically. I mean, this Gloria is 9, 18, 21, 22, 27, plus 6, 33, 30, about 35 minutes long. Plus the Kyrie makes this about 45 minutes of music even though it's an incomplete mass. So these masses are on a large scale, like B minor mass, large scale, Mrs. Solemnus, large scale, these last masses that he wrote. Um, it's a cantata mass. In other words, it has movements that break up into bits. But these bits are, I mean, there are fabulous choruses and intricate counterpoint. And the cool thing about about this Gloria, I mean, this Gloria is just, it's, it's, it's impossible to describe. It has an opening and closing chorus which are cyclical in nature. Both the music and the text of the opening of the Gloria, that is Laudamus Te, Benedicimus Te, Adoramus Te, Glorificamus Te, that stuff, that comes back at the end. There is a, a in a contrapuntal soup that's amazing, you've got the fugue subject mixed with the opening of the tune, which are in turn mixed with Gregorian chant melodies. It's fabulous hearing hearing you've got this opening with this crazy ritornello. You know, I always said Zelenka never never met a ritornello he couldn't do in prime numbers. You never know when they're going to end. They're always quirkily phrased and full of syncopations and 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 strange rhythms. And then all of a sudden there's this Gregorian chant thing with the ritornello bit underneath it, which is unbelievable sounding. And then you've got what sounds like like a, I can only describe it as like a Broadway musical sort of choral tune at the end. Do 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 da da ba da 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 It's kind of like Gollywog's cakewalk, right? Da 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 Yeah, it's like it's like almost a jazz rhythm at the end, and it's just nothing like this music. 
There really isn't. And, and it, it's minor, it's major, it, it changes mode constantly. It's out, and it's rhythmically thrilling. And, 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 and the choral writing is just like insane. It like gushes like a fountain. They're all going, there's nothing like it. Nothing like it in the choral repertoire, nothing at all. And this shorter piece, I know some of you have suggested longer works as the most typical to present to the god Kankrazans, who's going to destroy all of classical music but for one work per composer. But this really has everything. It has absolutely everything. You've got the, the, the folkish use of melody, the alternating major and minor, the strange rhythms, the odd phrasings, the whole deal. The vocal virtuosity, it's, 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 it's tremendous. Tremendous. This recording, by the way, is with um, Tafel Musik under Frieder Bernius. It's on Deutsche Harmonia Mundi. It's still around. You can find it. Um, it also contains one of his very, very last works. Um, he did a, a, seri a series of litanies. These are the, the Lauretane Litanae Salus Infirmorum. A litany is just a well, it's a, it's a you know arrangement of sacred works for specific purposes essentially, and this is like usually for the healing of the sick or or you know devotion to the Virgin Mary or something like that. And he did a bunch of them, um, and they also have some of the same qualities of these, and they're also major works, really considerably. I mean, it's also a, this is also a fairly big long sucker, and several several movements. They usually begin with a Kyrie and end with an Agnus Dei, and then there's all kinds of other more specific texts in the in the middle. So you get that as well as the Missa Dei Fili on this wonderful disc. But the piece in question is the Missa Dei Fili because there's just nothing like it in the entire Baroque period. And I know, I know, first of all, that if this were played more often, it would be extraordinarily popular. And I also know that it's so original and so fascinating that if the evil god Kankrazans hears this thing, he's not going to want to eliminate the rest of Zelenka. He's going to think this guy was cool. This guy was fascinating. And of course, he also wrote those amazing trio sonatas and the orchestral capriccios and these other things that, that, that we just have to be able to hear. We absolutely do. So go for it. Go for the Missa Dei you feel you. you will not be sorry. I guarantee it. If you like the Bach Magnificat or the Vivaldi Gloria or any of those Baroque classics that we listen to, you will want to hear this. And it will enchant. I will. I guarantee. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.